It's game time on 1112 BISN with live game coverage. Shout out to the 10 to the 5 touchdown, Bison! On your computer or mobile device anywhere in the world. Expert play by play by Steve McDonald. Cummings, it'll be Cummings, 5, Cummings, down to the pylon, yeah! touchdown, Bison! The bank's open on Saturday here in Cheyenne in the afternoon. Bank closed to Riverton, no out of town deposits. Intriguing color analyst, Alan Cummings. That, that's where a pump fake really works. Oh, yeah. She got the offensive rebound. She had it, three players around her. Just a quick... Put her in the yeah. air. Just so you know, I've already stopped tracking turnovers. Are you ready? Sit back and enjoy the game brought to you by the Bison. 1112 BISN, your Bison Network. Hey, this is Alan, 1112BISN, coming at you live from Casper, Wyoming, the Oil City, as your Cheyenne South Bison basketball teams are up here to take on Casper Natrona with our special guest, Darth Vader. <laughs> we'll let you guys guess who he is here in a second, but before we go on, um, very nice to have you. How, how, how was the trip? <laughs> I can't breathe in this thing. Oh, wait. Well, wrong dark helmet. Sorry. Wrong dark helmet. There you go. Darn. So for those of you who don't know who my special guest is, he's been the, he was the master of Wyoming prep athletics for so many years here in Wyoming. Wild, ran Wyo preps. So great. Kevin Coyle. Kevin, how you doing, uh, buddy? Oh, doing, doing great. You know, it, it's... I knew I knew your guys were going to be in town. You do you guys do a great broadcast online and all that. And I said, you know, I need to get back in the swing of things just a little bit before the state tournament. So I said, you're going to be in town. Why not? Hey, you know what? I'm glad to ha I'm glad to be up here. I'm glad you're up here with us. Steve couldn't make it, so that sucks. But you know, it's been oh man, I want to say four years since we've seen you at the state tournament when South made it to the state championship. That game. championship game against Central. against Central. So it, boys, it's really good to see yeah, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. really good to see absolutely. you again. And for those of you who don't realize, this guy knows everything about Wyoming prep athletics, not just in basketball, but for all the sports, as he was the one who put everything on wyopreps.com for all those years. And he actually even broke us into the game when we first started broadcasting. If you remember correctly, I was calling the Sheridan Bronx the Broncos when we first started, and you had to message me it was the Bronx. So it was a, it was a learning process for us. So to finally be able to have Kevin on the broadcast with us, it's, it's a special moment for me because I've always appreciated your work. Oh, you. And we hope that we can get you somehow involved back in Wyoming Preps athletic, Athletics. And what better than a basketball game on a Saturday afternoon in your hometown? You know, honestly, you know, with everything I've done with high school sports, there's only one thing I have never done. Play-by-play. -play. Oh! I've never done it. <laughs> well, you know what? You get to break that right here. How's that All sound? Right, I'm so, Kevin, let's go ahead and get, do a quick breakdown on the SNJ Science pregame show on the Natrona County Phillies. That that'll be the first game of our doubleheader. Um, Ten and five. They beat Laramie last night. You know, they average fifty points a game. What do you think about this team this year? Well, you know, they, if you look at the stats, obviously they have that great one-two combination in uh, Leisha Lane, who's averaging twelve point seven points a game, and then uh, Kate Robertson, who's doing eleven point seven points a game. They're both making like almost half of their field goal tries. So. Uh, that tells me this is a team that, you know, they can get in the paint and score mm -hmm. uh, a lot because uh, I know Lane Lane hasn't even, doesn't look like she's either tried or made a, th a three-point game. So uh, this is a game you really, the South, the South ladies, they have to stop the Phillies from scoring up close if they mm -hmm. want to have any chance. That, that, that looks like to be their strength. Well, you know, and I was looking at that, you mentioned they shoot at a high percentage. You mentioned Kate Robertson averaging almost 12 points a game at 11.7. 49% she shoots overall on field goal. And then you also have Alicia Lane at 47% at 12.7 points a game. S Kevin mentioned that South's going to have to make sure they don't give up those easy buckets. The one bad thing about the Lady Bison, though, is they always seem to have one quarter or a part of a quarter where they just tend to drop off their intensity. And if that happens against the Centrona County team, it might be a long day for them. Well, you know, I'm looking at the South Lady Bison numbers, too. I mean, Martina, she puts up pretty good numbers, too. And we just need to get, you know, another player or two to kind of step up their game a little bit more to back her up. Yes, exactly. And you know who that player is? She's my undercard. She's my wild card. Andrea. She's played in all 16 games, but she's only started the last five or six, and she's actually been playing great. She's a, she's a shooter. She's another slasher. 
she can she's a creator, I guess you could say, for the Lady Bison. And a game like this, this is a game to this is probably your last chance to fine tune things because you know we got after this you got two weeks left and you're going to make your second run through quadrant. Yep. Uh, so if you want to get things going and work in order to try to get that better seating, now now this is, your, this is pretty much your last chance to get things together. Exactly. South averaging 41 and a half points a game, which is 12th in the 4A conference. Their field goal percentage is 37 percent, which is fifth in the 4A conference. But man, I'll tell you what, they actually miss a lot of their high percentage shots when they are down low. Like Riley Van Tassel, she's a beast down low. If she can get some of those shots to fall, she's hitting 39%. And you look at that, in high school athletics, that's a pretty decent average. Yeah. But when you're the post player, you want to close to that higher 40s, mid 40 percentage range. If she can do that today, that'll really keep the Lady Bison team against the Lady Phillies. You know, and also for South, I mean, I don't, I don't know the exact numbers, just percentages, but, you know, if uh, Jay Brown, if she can do well in shooting her threes, is what, she makes 47% of her three-point shots. So, yes. so, so if she can, uh, if they can get her the ball behind, behind the line, she can knock down a few. Uh, Lady Bison might probably have a chance. You know what? They have a lot of momentum. They finally defeated the Sheridan Lady yeah. Bronx for the first mm -hmm. time in program history last night. Up there. And I'll tell you what, they did it on the road, exactly. Matter of fact, that was the closest they've been other than winning. I mean, they obviously won, but the closest they were up before that was when the Nobles were still playing for the South Lady Bison. Well, and Sheridan, what was it? Um, I'm trying to remember her name. It was uh, Riley Ryan, I think it was, for Sheridan. Yes. And now she is a, a senior at Arizona oh, State. Oh, my goodness, man. Uh, and they're still doing pretty <laughs> good. And, you know, Sheridan's kind of, you know, dwindled down since, yeah. since she graduated, and that was like four or five years ago. So. And you know what? Last week, South had had the Lady, the lady Camels from Campbell County on the ropes, lost by three points to them. Mm. So it's the, the program, this young program, the three years ago when they were freshmen, I would predict they would make state this year. And you know what? They have a possibility to be one of those top four seeds out of the East when regionals start. But they've got, like you said, they've got to start putting things together now. And what better test against this really good Natron County team? Well, we're going to take a quick commercial timeout. We'll be back here on the SNJ Science program pregame show. Talk some boys action, which is the second game of our doubleheader here on the Bison. 11-12, BISN your bison network hit a deer parking lot dings hail damage or just roadway demolition derby no matter how your vehicle gets damaged missile drive auto body will make sure it gets repaired back to pre-loss condition and as quickly as possible no shortcuts no compromises and remember where you get your car repaired is not your insurance company's decision it's yours call today for an estimate appointment at 307-635-0639 missile drive auto body quality without compromise are you tired of living in pain? Do you just want to feel better, move better, and love your life? Then it's time to get physical. At Through our comprehensive programs, you will discover how to achieve the pinnacle of healthy living, expand your boundaries, and love your life again. Call us at 307-772-0955. Let's get moving again and experience the physical difference today. Bookkeeping is like a puzzle. Do you know where to put all the pieces? Pena Business Services does and they can help. Realizing your company is like its own unique puzzle, it's their goal to show you how your company is reaching its goals on a weekly, monthly, or quarterly basis. Offering bookkeeping, payroll, and tax services that are tailored to fit your business. At Pena Business Services, they can help allow you to focus on your business and effectively serve your customers. Set up your free consultation now by calling 307-369-2708. Pena Business Services, solving your bookkeeping puzzle one piece at a time. Hey, this is Alan, 1112 BISN, back here live with our special guest, Kevin Coyle at Natrona County High School, home of the Mustangs and the Phillies. This is going to be your perspective for both games. Um, it's the best they could put us. I mean, this is where the press goes, so we are going to have the... Uh, well, I mean, in theory, they could put us at center court, but we'd be shooting towards the windows. Exactly. And in an afternoon game, that, that makes things for a camera very... Uh, it, it's very distracting with the bright light coming in the window. You know, if, if this was a night... Uh, then we have no problem shooting That's from true. court. And I'll tell you what, I'm giving you guys a pan of this 
amazing basketball gym. Probably one of the nicest gyms I've seen here in Wyoming. It, it is, but you know what, though? Be, see, I've been here since uh, 2003, and uh, I, I, I still miss the, or, the old Orange Dungeon. Uh, <laughs> shooter group. Well, you know, if you go out in the lobby, you know, go up the stairs and out here, you know, you see the seats out here, mm -hmm. and that, that, those are the seats from the old Orange Dungeon. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Those, those are like, say, if you go to Kelly Walsh mm -hmm. um, uh, cro across town, when you walk out the gym, you know, if you go up the stairs in the lobby, uh, you see areas where you can sit in, and that's actually part of the uh, old basketball court. Well, you know what? This is, the, this is amazing. We've been broadcasting. This is our ninth year broadcasting for the, for the South High Bison. This is our first time ever to broadcast inside Natrona County High School for a basketball game. So I know I had mentioned that earlier, but this, this is kind of a special moment for me. Of course, you only, you, well, you only, you only cross conference. Uh, you know, you only do, you only do one game cross cross yep. quadrant, I should say. Yep. And uh, I haven't actually seen the numbers. Of course, the new reclassification cycle will kick in next school year. Yep. And from my understanding, the Casper schools are going to reverse. Oh yeah, and Kelly Walsh will be in the east North, and northeast. Yeah. yeah and and, uh, and turn will go to the northwest. So you won't have to worry about. Yeah, I mean, you'll still have to come to Casper yep. uh, every other year. It's yep. just the next trip you'll be at at Kelly. At Kelly. Well, it's going to be an interesting day today as your South High Bison take on the Natrona County Mustangs in the second game of our doubleheader. You know, I'm, I'm not going to really let records dictate what we what we think this game could be. The Mustangs are 4-11, and South 7-10. and But you know what? In my personal opinion, this Mustang team is probably the best Mustang team they've had since they won the state championship in 2015. Yeah, they're, they're one of those teams. It, it, it's, a, it's like a Jekyll and Hyde. You know, it all depends on, who, on who's going to show up. Uh, the Mustangs, of course, they're led, they're led by uh, Cooper Quigg. You know, he does about 12, 12 points a game and 87% mm -hmm. from the free throw line. Uh, you know, I, I think sometimes it's just a, cons it's just a consistency, consistency issue, like my talking, uh, <laughs> for the Mustangs. So. Well, you know what? To talk about consistency, the South Bison, are, they're, they, they have those issues where they play good two or three quarters, and then they have that one quarter, kind of like the Lady Bison. They'll have that one quarter where they take off, but they're led by Cameron Bird, the senior, at 18.3 points a game, shooting 42% overall. He did struggle a little bit last week against the, uh, against the uh, Campbell County Camels and the Thunder Basin Bolts. He did turn. I don't know what he scored last night against Sheridan. I didn't make that trip to Sheridan, but he's our pace getter for the South Bison, followed by Leandre Ray, the sophomore. Yeah, I mean. And you know, you just you just look at the numbers. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I know. I, I personally have not seen Bird play either, but uh, you know, just like just like the girls, you know, they got they got that one person who scores really well. They just need maybe just a couple more to just to just kind of step up their game just a little bit to provide backup. I've seen this with many teams. You know, big schools, small schools. No matter no matter where no matter where you go, and no matter, you know, so sometimes I mean. You know, you, you want to try to be that guy to try to carry the team on your shul shoulders, but you got to be careful. You do too much, you're going to end up doing some harm. And it, 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 it's just an old cliche in sports. Well, the South Bison are in the middle of a youth movement as we got five players that are sophomores that will be playing today. Number 21, Marcus Manzanares. Number three, Leandre Ray. Number 12, Jeremiah Moite. And number 15, Mari Alexander. As you can see on your screen there, those five players will see quite a bit of minutes. Four of the five, mainly. Number 35, Dev Devon Simmons, he'll see some playing time. This is a big youth movement for the South Bison as we're about 40 seconds away from tip. Kevin, give us your keys to success for both teams today. Well, for the girls, it's definitely for South. you got to um, stop the, the Phillies from scoring inside and then try to knock down those, those outside shots. Uh, for, you know, for, for the guys, I think they just need to continue, you know, doing what, they, what they've been doing. Like I said, Natrona boys, they're Jekyll and Hyde, so it all depends who shows up. Exactly. And, you know, my, my thing with the, with the South Lady Bison, they've got to control the boards. They average 28 rebounds a game, which is good enough for tied for six in the 4A conference, but they give up 32.6 rebounds a game. But, yeah, Natrona, yeah. the girls, they're second in rebounding.
Great rendition of the national anthem as they get ready to start announce the starters for today's games. Yeah, so the point we were talking about earlier, yeah, Natrona girls, yeah, they're they're second in 4A in rebounding, a averaging almost 36 rebounds a game. Uh, so, so yeah, so not only does that show that the Phillies, you know, they can score up close, they can get up close for those missed shots. Yeah, and actually, I was looking at the boys' stats when I was talking about it. South averaging 26.7 rebounds a game, which is 15th in the 4A conference. They've really got to make sure they do not, they do give up a lot of rebounds covering this team this year, and that's going to drive me nuts, Kevin, when you hear us during the broadcast. Oh, yeah. but. So not only not only do the Lady Bison, they got to stop Natrona from scoring inside, they got to get inside themselves and grab those rebounds. Exactly. they got to get those loose balls. They have been doing a lot better of a job lately these last couple weeks. So, you know, they say you want to try to start playing your best basketball towards the end of the season. Hopefully they're doing that. Natrona's been playing good all year. So it's going to be good to see what the Lady Bison can do against this Natrona County Mustang team. Of course, it's the last quad cross-quadrant game for both squads because yeah. everyone will make their second run next in, the, in these last two weeks of the regular season before regionals. Number three, Kylie Hildebrand averaging five points a game, 4.9. Then number 15, Oh, sorry, Kate Robertson, we mentioned her. How could I forget her? Only 11.7 points a game she's averaging for the Phillies. Number 15, Brooklyn Hittrick, averaging 6.3 points a game. And then the big scorer for the Phillies, number 55, Alicia Lane, at 12.7 points a game. Overall, as a team, they shoot 36%. So South's going to have to make sure that they do what they can to keep those easy shots to a minimum. Well, yeah, and you see, yeah, 36%, but, you know, uh, Robertson and Lane, you know, they're both doing around 50%, so we know who's doing most yep. of the shooting on this team. So if you're looking on your computer screen, you'll be going from top to bottom rather than from left to right <laughs> for your Lady Bison. And that's going to be a quick get out to number three, Hildebrand. So the Lady Feelies are going to control the tip. Already looking for ways to get inside. Boy, I tell you what, that long jumper right there. That's number five, Robertson. So Brown with the ball now. She's going to be coming right at us. They're just going to pass the ball. Be patient on offense. Try to get the ball down low to Van Tassel. I mean, so far, South's defense, you know, do, doing the job early, st stopping uh, Natrona from scoring inside. But, you know, that, that was a longer shot, so... You know what, I think they can live with those shots as the shot's gonna get blocked out of bounds. That was Demas going in for the shot attempt there. South will retain possession though. Yeah, you just gotta, you know, it's like the old adage says, you know, you, they, you gotta make them earn it. Hard to see what happened there. That was yeah, I know. We got bars right in front of us, so we're gonna try to keep you updated. It looks like there was a five second call, so it's gonna be a turnover on South. We don't know who though. So Natrona at the top of the key, they get the ball down low. Now they're going to kick it out. Far side, right side. Down low into the low block. That's going to be number 55 yeah, with the basket. Good. Van Tassel's going to pick up the foul. One thing that Riley does also, she does get into foul trouble. Man, that's the one person you don't want to get going, though. The old-fashioned three-point play for number five. I'm sorry, number 55, Alicia Lane. So we know what the matchup, we know what the matchups are right yep. now early on. And she hits it to make it five to nothing. Matrona over your, the Lady Bison. South's looking for a way to get inside, but they're just not finding it right now. Man, they're doing a, Matrona's yeah. doing a really good job keeping the Lady Bison out of the paint. South's gonna have to get a little more creative, a little more yeah. patient too though. Don't force anything, but don't get that yeah. five second kind. Yeah, Robertson Lane are, are the ones guarding the line for Matrona. And yeah, travel. So Demas going to get called for the travel there. And I'm updating the score right now as we speak. There it is. Five to nothing, your score. Petrona with the ball. So we got these bars right in front of us. Me and Kevin, keep, we have to keep raising or lowering our head. There's a missed shot. Rebound by Drea. She's going to push it down into the front court. Give it off to Martinez. Martinez. 
Nice move there by Van Tassel. Cut off, though, by Lane. Martinez with the runner off the glass, up and in. Good shot, good shot. You know, that's what they got to do. They got to take it, take it to him inside. South Lady Bison actually knocked Natrona out of the 4A East Regionals last year. That was in Cheyenne, I think. Yes, right? it was, yep. This year... It's going to be up in Sheridan, if I'm no, correct? No, I, I think it was a Thunder Basin, wasn't it? Is it Thunder Basin? Maybe, well, yeah, that is, yep. So there's a substitution. I just started learning these players' names, and they sub them out like that, Kevin. That's how they do it. Yep. <laughs> so South trailing 5-2 to two on the Majestic Butterfly scoreboard. Martinez is going to bring the ball into the front court, and she's going to be bent, met by number 15, Pure Tech. Nice spin move. Martinez from the free throw line misses, and it's going to be rebounded by number five, Robertson. So number 23 is in. That's Paddock. Yep. Uh, down yep, low. Yep, yep. That's just a size match match there. Number five, Robertson probably has a good two or three inches on Martinez, it looked like. So that's seven to two now. Matrona over the Lady Bison. You know, yeah, Neutrona definitely showing somewhat of a height advantage and using it in this game. South's getting some pretty good looks early on. Just right now, the shots are nothing's not dropping. Nothing's falling for them down 7-2. And right now there's going to be a timeout on the floor. It's going to be a full timeout, so we're going to take one with them, show some of our sponsors some love on the Bison. 11-12, BISN, your Bison Network. Are you tired of living in pain? Do you just want to feel better, move better, and love your life? Then it's time to get physical. At Physical, through our comprehensive programs, you will discover how to achieve the pinnacle of healthy living, expand your boundaries, and love your life again. Call us at 307-772-0955. Let's get moving again and experience the physical difference today. This broadcast is being brought to you by the Bison. 1112 BISN, your Bison Network. And we're back from that Pena Business Services timeout. Your South Lady Bison trailing right now. 7 to 2 on the Majestic Butterfly scoreboard. Want to give a shout out to Grandma and Grandpa to Brian. They didn't make it up here to Casper, so I hope you're enjoying this broadcast. I know it's it's a different angle, but you know what? You get to see them, so that's good, right? Well, hope you guys are all doing well. And all of our other viewers watching this game, thank you for tuning in with our special guest, Kevin Coyle. Number 23, Paddock, brings the ball in into the front court. Hounded by McKenna Harlan. She's in there, one of our best defenders, actually. Martinez is going to get called for the foul. She swats at it as number five. Robertson is going to go to the free throw line. 74% free throw shooter. Yeah, and they're trying to, you can, you, even from our angle, you can tell that uh, they're trying, they're really trying to use their height advantage to get those up close baskets. Uh, driving, driving the baseline and, and just making their moves. You know what? If they can't stop you in the paint, might as well just keep down in the blocks and just let, let feeding them. Yep. There's going to be a first miss on them. Uh, missile drive out of body free throws. You know what? Percentage says she's going to make this one, though. If you go by percentages, right? Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> Oh, I thought she was going to miss it. <laughs> so that makes it 8-2 to two now. South. Travels. Yep. Yeah, she, she, was, she got past the midcourt, saw somebody, but then somebody was covered. She, and she just she, she stopped and hesitated and got the travel. Liga coming in for Martinez. I actually like the substitution because you could tell that Martinez looked a little frustrated. But get her out of the game, let her calm those nerves down, and then put her back in once she's ready to go. So Natrona, just playing patient. South looks like they're playing in a zone. No, they're in a man. Trying to get a little double team going, though. <sighs> they're just big down in the paint as Natrona just got two offensive rebounds. And now they're going to pass it around. Good defensive position by Van Tassel, but nobody there for the blockout, which is going to cause a foul. I think that's going to be on Jaya Brown. Out of position on that one. And it is. Jay Brown going to be called for her first foul. That's the third team foul for the, for the Lady Bison. And that's once again going to send Robertson to the free throw line. She hits the first. 
already at six. Yeah, she's got six in the Toronto's nine points already. And seven. Well, she's definitely establishing her dominance down low. South trailing 10 to two. That's a nice look there by Demas to Harlan, who's wide open. Misses it off the glass. South one for four from the field. Four turnovers. Sorry, three turnovers. There's a three. Miss. Nobody there to rebound but Natrona. Well, we had one person just got out jumped. Natrona just showing a little more hustle right now. Yeah, game. south in the 2-3 zone now. Paddock with the shot. I'm sorry, that's here, Tech. Natrona playing nice, patient basketball right now. Don't force anything. You know, if you pass the ball quickly against the zone, you can get a basket in. And there's a nice shot attempt. And, well, I tell you what, she's just... Number five, Robertson, is tall. And she's going to get called for the foul on that one. She oh, got one of her offensive yeah, rebounds. Yeah, put, push in the back. Push in the back. Well, you know, you know when, when, you got, when you got a good lead, especially early in the game, uh, you, know, you, can, you, you, can, you can afford to you know, kind of take your time. Look exactly. Your and you know what? When you've got seven points, you're starting to feel it. You want to get that ball in your hands. So. <laughs> but she's going to be subbed out by number 10, Haley, Haley Gibson. So they're going small right now. Demas at the top of the key, down into the paint for Van Tassel. Van Tassel gets cut off to Brown for three. Ball gets tipped, and it's going to be rebounded by Demas. Foul, on, yep. Reach foul on Atrona. Emma Paddock picks up her first foul, second team foul for Natrona. They get the ball into... Van Tassel, turn around, off the backboard, miss. I'll tell you what, that's one thing South really needs to start getting down, getting some of those higher percentage shots to, to go down. There's a nice tip and turnover force as Demas, she gets it into the front court. She puts a, ooh, I thought it was a held ball. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I was thinking a jump call. Yeah. I think it was like 23, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. 23, and the paddock. Boy, she had control of that, but you know what? They got the ball anyways. As there's a baseline three, and that is good. And it looks like it is going to be number 21, 21 13 Tam to Tam 2 now. Tamron Blum. There's a look to Martinez, and she misses. South shots just not falling right now. They're getting some decent looks. Raina Tovar's had to check in. Yeah, but you know, Toronto's height is you know still playing playing a factor a little bit. I mean, you know, South's taking a few outside shots and they've had decent looks. They just haven't they just haven't gotten the drops. Well, Alicia Lane just missed that shot and Martinez gets the ball back, but it's going to be a turnover South as it goes off Van Tassel's hands. Mm -hmm. South one for ten from the field to start the game. Trailing thirteen to two, one fifty two left in the first quarter. Thank you all for joining in. As a matter of fact, if you're watching from Cheyenne, hit the like button, hit that thumbs up button on your video, let us know you're watching. Down low to Alicia Lane. I always did. <laughs> we, and we appreciate that, Kevin. And that is gonna be, I think it's gonna be Van Tassel. Either Van Tassel or Brown. Ooh, they're gonna say number four. I must have missed that one. Liggett. Snuck in there and got yeah. the foul. Lane, Lane, Lane's going for a three-point play. She, the shot was good. Just rims out, but they get the rebound and the putback miss. They get another rebound. And that's going to be a foul on Natrona, though. And I'll tell you what, South, they've got to find out a way. They've got to find a way to block out better. Get that ball. Prevent these second and third scoring opportunities for Natrona. Third team foul. Alicia Lane, she's got five points as well for the Lady Phillies, or for the Phillies. Brown gets trapped. They give it off to Van Tassel. Almost gets the ball stolen. Does get it fouled. That's Colby with the call. I roughed a game with him a couple weeks ago. Good young official. Is that number two? Yes, correct. Kuganauer, two and a half points a game. Picks up her first foul. Both teams sitting at 14 fouls, though. 
Liggett. They reset to Brown. Brown comes near side. It's a nice zone defense by Natrone has really got South stifled right now. Trying my best at this angle to keep up with all the action. Hope you guys aren't getting motion sick. <laughs> yeah, it's just the wind. I think I'm just going to zoom out. <laughs> we had like a 90 mile an hour gust yesterday. Oh, did you really? Yeah, on an outer, outer drive. There's a baseline three hit. Ooh, good shot. Number 21. South trailing now 18 to 2. That's a nice give there to Reina Tovar. Misses the shot though. I think she got her on rebound that knocked it out of bounds. <sighs> One field goal for the Lady Bison. Robertson back in. She's almost at her average already. <laughs> Seven points. South employing the full court defense wide open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She didn't yeah. get that fast enough. She's got nine points already. Under 10 seconds left in this first quarter. Turnover South. Yeah, nothing. And that's going to be it for the end of the first quarter. Your South Lady Bison ahead to the second. Trailing 20 to 2. We're going to take a timeout here on the Bison. 11 12. BISN, your Bison Network. It's much more affordable than you realize to protect your family with the Robert Martinez Agency. Having life insurance will protect you and your loved ones and help insure the future. As a trusted advisor, Robert Martinez will guide you through the wide range of life insurance plans and their fantastic benefits to find an affordable plan with the right coverages. Working to guide and secure your future. Robert Martinez Agency, 20th and Central in downtown Cheyenne. Call for a no-obligation consultation and quote at 307-514-5003. And we're back, ready to begin second quarter action. The South Lady Bison trailing right now, 20 to two. South was one for 11 from the field in that first quarter. Credit that defense though from Natrona, pressuring the Lady Bison in some awkward positions and shots they probably didn't want. Yeah, on the other end, yeah, Natrona just uh, you know being a little quicker, using the height advantage. And there's a bucket. 31. Demas gets her first points of the game. South back in that man defense. Natrona looking, they're looking to get the ball in the paint still. It's number 23 drive, she kicks it out, Paddock. She's gonna be fouled by, actually it's gonna be Robertson fouled. Let's see who this one's on. Number two, Martinez, that's gonna be her second. Team fifth. So McKenna Harlan checking in. Paddock with the ball. She comes near side to Campbell. Campbell overlooks everything, gives it off to Robertson. Down low, wide open. I think that's number two, Kugenauer. Nope, that was Gibson. Gibson. Harlan to Demas. Demas into the semicircle, gives it off to Brown. Now Brown, they're just going to pass it around up top, wait for that one little gap to open up. Brown going to reset. Yeah, the problem is, though, for Natrona, you got Robertson, the big girl down there in the paint. She's, she's not getting fooled with this game of musical chairs. No, she's not. And she's doing a really good job keeping Van Tassel from getting the ball as well. There's a long three from Brown. She misses. 
Rebound, Natrona. Campbell with the ball. She's looking to get the ball to Robertson. Robertson throws up a runner and she's up and in. She's got 11. One, and she's only, she's pretty much at her average. And we're just early second and we're quarter. Just early second quarter. Demas gets cut off by number 10. They get the ball to Van Tassel. Puts in a drive. Throws up a runner off the glass. Misses. That was a good look though. Rebound Natrona. 24 to four over the Lady Bison. Tovar now on the defense, Brown on the defense. And they get the ball to Robertson. She's looking. Number 23, Paddock. Now number 15. I like how patient the Lady Phil uh, the Phillies are right now. Ooh. There's a long three. Miss. Rebound goes to. They're going to call a foul. It's going to be South Ball, though. I think it's going to be on number five. Actually, no, 15. Not used to being this far up. <laughs> I should have brought my glasses, Kevin. It's 15. Brooklyn Here Tech picks up her first foul. Alicia Lane checking back in. Sure, did like two or three subs themselves. So Brown with the ball goes far side to Demas. That's Drea. Gets the screen. Looking for an opening, cuts it out to Brown. New play being called out by Coach DeBryan. Riley, oop, that's Raina Tovar with the three. Misses, rebound goes to Natrona. South, South, South 0 for 4. South just having a lot of trouble trying to get inside scoring. And of course, that's a credit to Toronto's height advantage. You know, and you, and you could tell when, when they start putting up threes like that. I mean, they've only shot four so far this game, but they're trying to get that defense to kind of sp spread out a little bit more, come out further, hopefully open something up in the paint. There's going to be a 30-second timeout, though. Detroit. We're going to keep it right here, though, on this Pena Business Services timeout, kind of give you a look once again of this gymnasium here, nice gymnasium. There's the windows. Oh, yeah. That's the reason why you can't shoot from center court. Yep. You know, they did a good job of transferring everything over from the old orange gym. And actually, yeah, behind that wall where, where you ju we just saw, not far behind there is where the old gym used to be. Oh, okay. Okay. I remember when they started construction on this. But there was the metal bars that we were talking about. <laughs> that kind of gives us a... A little bit hard of a, harder of a view when it gets towards the end line. Of course, Natrona, actually the boys, they were having some fun earlier this week uh, working on it in practice because uh, this season actually marks uh, 25 years from the barking dog play. Oh, really? <laughs> and they pulled it off at Kelly. Oh, did they really? It was, yeah, they pulled it off at Kelly. And there's another basket. Alicia Lane, she's got nine or seven points. 26 to four. Tovar picks up the loose ball for the Lady Bison. Martinez, that's a good look by Martinez, and she's going to get the basket to go in. That, that was a, uh, you, you could tell, she, she, the look on her face, she's like, finally, got a, yep. she's got a break. She's got four of the six Bison points in the first half so far. Demas tips the ball away. There's going to be a travel, though. Yeah, she did just enough that. Yep. I think that's the big misperception about travels in high school basketball. Yeah. People think you get two steps. And once you set yeah. that pivot foot, if you pick that pivot foot up, you've either got to shoot or pass the ball before you put it back down. Hey, just do a one-foot one balancing act. Yeah, Hildebrand, yeah. she had that ball loose, and then she lost track of what she was doing when she tried to recover. Turn over south. That should be an offensive foul, and yeah, it's going to be it is. number 15. Here Tech going to be called with that turnover. Phillies South will have the ball, and who's going to be checking in now? That's two on her. Yeah, she's going to be out for first. So number 10, Gibson checking back in. She's got two points. Six fouls for the Phillies. Five for the Lady Bison. 
Martinez checking back in. I'm sorry, Martinez gets the ball. Don't force anything. Ugh. Yeah, that, 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 yep. that they tried to force. Yep. That went right off of Van Tassel's hand. Sometimes it's better to just retreat and reset. 26 to 6, your score, your score on the Majestic Butterfly scoreboard. I mean, when you're down by that much, you know, you're, you, you get frustrated. Demas with the steal. She can go in. She's going to get the... Oh. Oh. Doesn't get the basket to fall, but she's going to get two free throws. And a Kugan error. Demas, a 46% free throw shooter, has got two points. Oh. It's a struggle when your free throws aren't even going to go down. Those are our first ones this game, though. It's hard to find ways to get to a line against a big team. She hits her second one. South trailing now 26 to 7. <coughs> Nice full court defense. Slow that offense down. But number three, Hildebrand gets by Demas. Yeah, South, South does a pretty good job being aggressive on defense. They just need to be able to switch that over off to offensively. And they cannot, let, they cannot let Alicia Lane set up in the low block like that either. Make her work for those points a little harder. Miss by Demas. Rebound. Phillies. Threw it away. South's got numbers. Demas can finish it. She's going to go to the free throw line. I think Natrona just tried, <coughs> Toronto tried to push it just a little too much. They weren't quite ready for it. Put that foul on Haley Gibson. So Demas hits the second, her second free throw. She's got... Four points. South now down 28 to 8. Misses the second one. It's going to be rebounded by Lane. Campbell. Well, that, that's just an intimidating duo to have to defend. Lane misses the shot, but gets her own rebound and puts it back up and in. You know, you get so deep in the post that those little misses like that, the rebound's going to come right back to you. You're already going to have position because of that. So there's a shot by Harlan long off the iron. It's going to be rebounded by number five, Robertson. Yeah, it lost it. Turnover Phillies. South ball. 2.09 left as... Angie Liggett and Jaya Brown checking back in for the Lady Bison. They're going to go in for Demas and Van Tassel. So Brown's going to get the ball in the backcourt. She calls out the offense. Two minutes left. Harlan with the ball. Looking, gives it off to Martinez, top of the key. She's being guarded by Campbell. She comes left side. That would be your right side if you're watching. Actually, your left side because of where we're at. There's going to be a push on the end line, and that's going to be a one and one So Martina is going to go to the free throw line for the front end of a one and one Second best free throw shooter on the team is Martinez at 57%. Hitrick picking up her third hit trick, sorry, hit trick picking up her third foul for insurance. That's that's gonna put her on the bench. She gets the front end, so she'll get the bonus. You know what? They they've been aggressive, but the one thing I noticed about the Phillies is when they get a player that gets the second foul, or in this case, the third foul, they've been able to plug somebody back in. Ooh, they corrected it. So they put the foul to number five. Yep, yes, they did. So Martinez with the bonus free throw, and she gets it to go. South trailing 30-10. to 10. 
Stolen by Brown. Liggett thought about the three and said, kicks it off to Harlan, who kicks off the three, and she hits. Good shot. Our first Good one from shot. deep. Good shot. The, the patience paid off on that play. Whoops. Tovar gets the ball. She's going to attack. Instead, turn around. And misses. And it's going to be rebounded by Brown, but it's going to go out of bounds. Oh, they're going to, yep. South picking up the pace. I like it because I mean they, uh, I think Ro is Robertson on the bench for a turn right now. Yeah, they're giving her they're giving her a bit of bit of a break. So South's trying to take advantage of the situation. Officials are talking about something. Yep, so they're fixing the fouls. So, nope, it's going to be number 15. Kirtek, who does have the third foul. That's her at three. Robson only has one. Trona gets it into the front court. Boy, they get the ball down a little lane. That's a way to push her out, but she's so strong. She's so strong. They got her, they got the ball exactly where the Lady Bison wanted her to get the ball, and she just backed Harlan down like she wasn't even there. <laughs> it's almost kind of like, uh, I don't exactly use the term slugfest, but uh, it, it, the Toronto's showing it. I know South's trying to step it up aggressively on defense, but uh, the Toronto's just, just, just willing to, to go with it for now. So that's, once again, positioning right there. She got the ball so deep in the paint that she missed the shot, was able to get her own rebound, put up the second shot, and Liggett's going to pick up the foul. Or is it Harlan? Harlan's going to pick up the foul, her first, and that's going to put the Bison in the bonus. Sorry, the Phillies in the bonus now. Now it's only the sixth. I have seven team fouls. Hmm. She hits it, though, makes it 33-13. to 13. Brown, looking, gets the screen. Boy, they're really looking to get the ball to Martinez. He's being well defended. That could have been an offensive foul right there, but they let it go. Harlan from the top of the key for the three, and she hits again. Outside The outside shooting finally starting to show for Lady Bison. 25 seconds left in this half, and she's got six points for the Lady Bison. Two three-pointers. Momentum can be a friendly thing when it's on your side. That's true, and that's travel. Yes, that is. So Blom with the turnover now as Martinez checks back in. She was looking, yeah, she was just looking for somebody. Nobody was there and then kind of lost her balance on that step. South could have the last shot. I wonder if they're going to do a heat check and let Harlan shoot it again. I would. At this point, why not? <laughs> Now she's getting triple team though. Yep. So turnover south. I like this defense for offense. Keep her out of foul trouble. She's already got two fouls, so they're going to bring Tovar back in. No easy shots here, so one thing you don't want to do is let Lane, if you're a Bison defender, let Lane catch the ball on the block. That's going to be bounced out of bounds. There's the turnover you wanted. Exactly. And you're going to get the ball deep. Exactly. It, it was it was a it was a tough inbound it was a tough inbound pass that the just couldn't handle. So the Lady Bison have a chance for the last shot once again. Liggett into Tovar. Liggett to Brown. Brown for three misses, Ooh. and that's going to be it at the half. Your South Lady Bison trailing, 33 to 16 to the Phillies in Natrona County. We're going to take an extended timeout, come back here for second half action on the Bison with me and Kevin, 11-12, BISN, your Bison Network.
Pena Business Services, providing bookkeeping, payroll, tax, and notary services since 2007. At Pena Business Services, they help small to medium sized companies and nonprofits for all your bookkeeping, payroll, and tax needs. They also help individuals with their tax preparations, helping manage your day to day accounting with services provided on a schedule that fits your budget. Their goal is providing business owners like you peace of mind on your bookkeeping, payroll, and tax concerns so you can focus on your business. Bookkeeping is like a puzzle. Do you know where to put all of the pieces? Give Pena Business Services a call at 307-369-2708 to set up a free consultation. Welcome to the historic Round Top Mountain Motel and Cabins. Located in scenic Thermopolis, Wyoming, it is within walking distance access to the Hot Springs State Park, as well as world-class fishing, motorcycling, golfing, rodeo grounds, and downtown shopping and restaurants. A Wyoming family-owned and operated motel for travelers offers seasonal rates for nightly, weekly, and monthly rentals. Senior, military, and government discounts are also available. Stay at the Round Top Mountain Motel and Cabins on your next visit to Thermopolis, Wyoming. Make your reservation by calling 307-421 7520 and tell them 1112 BISN Center. Activity programs instill a sense of pride in school and community. At a cost of only 1 to 3 percent of overall school budget, high school activity programs are a bargain. Activities are not a diversion but rather an extension of a good educational program. Mental and physical health are improved through activities. Schools that have music programs have higher graduation rates 90.2 percent compared to 72.9 Statistics aside, join the ride. We are Wyoming High Schools. Missile Drive Auto Body is a full-service auto body repair facility in Cheyenne, Wyoming. We have established a reputation as an auto repair shop that is honest, performs quality body repairs and refinish, and strives for excellent customer service. And we guarantee our workmanship for as long as you own your vehicle. Call us today at 307-635-0639 or visit us at 1910 Missile Drive in Cheyenne. Missile Drive Auto Body. Quality without compromise. You're watching the Bison. 1112 BISN. Your Bison Network. It's much more affordable than you realize to protect your family with the Robert Martinez Agency. Having life insurance will protect you and your loved ones and help insure the future. As a trusted advisor, Robert Martinez will guide you through the wide range of life insurance plans and their fantastic benefits to find an affordable plan with the right coverages. Working to guide and secure your future. Robert Martinez Agency, 20th and Central in downtown Cheyenne. Call for a no-obligation consultation and quote at 307-514-5003. Whether you're a competitive athlete or a weekend warrior, it's frustrating when an injury keeps you from the activities you love. Physical Therapy and Balance Centers has helped thousands of clients recover from sports injuries and reclaim their lifestyles. Treating a variety of injuries, including sprains, post-surgical, foot and ankle injuries, as well as back and neck injuries. Our therapists will develop a personalized treatment plan to help you heal and hasten your recovery and minimize your risk of re-injury. Call 307-772-0955 to schedule an appointment now. Physical Therapy and Balance Centers, let's get moving again. Majestic Butterfly Beauty Salon knows great hair. Whether it's for a trim, getting rid of stubborn gray hair, or just freshen up, Majestic Butterfly is a cut above the rest. Formal hairdos for school dances, or getting ready for the happiest day of your life. The professionals at Majestic Butterfly know how to make you look your best and feel your best for every day and for every occasion. Offering women's, men's, and children haircuts color services, perms, eyelash extensions, and eyebrow and lip waxing. Call 307-369-2201 now for a free consultation and schedule your appointment. Stylists can also be contacted directly at the numbers below. Locally owned and family friendly, Majestic Butterfly, hair and beyond. For the friendships. For the memories. For the excitement. For the challenge. For the love of the game. Time management. To rise above the challenge. To respect others. To be humble. To never quit. The officials. To the positive fans. The parents. 
to the coaches, to the teammates. We are Wyoming High Schools. Hit a deer. Parking lot dings, hail damage, or just roadway demolition derby? No matter how your vehicle gets damaged, Missile Drive Auto Body will make sure it gets repaired back to pre-loss condition and as quickly as possible. No shortcuts, no compromises. And remember, where you get your car repaired is not your insurance company's decision, it's yours. Call today for an estimate appointment at 307-635-0639. Missile Drive Auto Body. Quality without compromise. This broadcast is being brought to you by the Bison, 1112-B-I-S-N, your Bison Network. Physical Therapy and Balance Centers in Cheyenne is unlike any therapy center you've been to before. Our highly skilled, compassionate team of therapy providers are 100% focused on achieving optimal health and wellness for you. If you are tired of living in pain, want to just feel better and move better, or want to improve your strength, endurance, and physical conditioning, then it's time to get physical. Experience the physical difference today by calling 307-772-0955 or visit their website at physicalcenters.com. Physical Therapy Therapy and balance centers. Let's get moving again. More than 7.7 million American teenagers participate in high school sports every year, including about 19,000 here in Wyoming. They're all learning essential life lessons, like the importance of hard work, time management, and self discipline, skills that are helping them become better leaders and more active, responsible citizens. This message presented by the Wyoming High School Activities Association and the Wyoming Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. Bookkeeping is like a puzzle. Do you know where to put all the pieces? Pena Business Services does and they can help. Realizing your company is like its own unique puzzle, it's their goal to show you how your company is reaching its goals on a weekly, monthly, or quarterly basis. Offering bookkeeping, payroll, and tax services that are tailored to fit your business. At Pena Business Services, they can help allow you to focus on your business and effectively serve your customers. Set up your free consultation now by calling 307-369-2708. Pena Business Services, solving your bookkeeping puzzle one piece at a time. Hey, this is Steve. And this is Alan. And you're listening to The Bison on 1112 BISN. Your Bison Network. Choosing the right collector car insurance is critical. That's why American National provides clients with reliable, consistent service. Robert Martinez has first-hand knowledge of the concerns collector car and truck owners face. And American National has created a policy with the coverage and enhancements you need to protect your valuable investment. Call Robert Martinez with American National Insurance at 307-514-5003 or visit his office at 2005 Central Avenue in Cheyenne. The Round Top Mountain Motel and Cabins is the place to stay the next time you're in Thermopolis, Wyoming. One review from TripAdvisor says, The Round Top is a great place to stay, not only because it's old-fashioned and quaint, not only because it's very inexpensive, and not only because you truly feel like a guest, it is also just a 10-minute walk to the hot springs. I don't know why you'd want to stay anywhere else. Make your reservation now at the Round Top Mountain Motel and Cabins by calling 307-421-7520. Majestic Butterfly Beauty Salon treats your hair like their canvas. Locally owned and family friendly, Majestic Butterfly offers women, men's, and children haircuts, as well as color services and perms. Your hair is their masterpiece. So if you are looking for a new style, great hair doesn't happen by chance, it happens by appointment. Our stylist can schedule an appointment by calling any of the numbers below, or you can call Majestic Butterfly directly at 307-369-2201. Majestic Butterfly, beautiful hair with beautiful care.
And we're back from the halftime on the Majestic Butterfly scoreboard. It is Natrona 33, South 16. South was 5 for 21 from the field in the first half. Nine turnovers. Kevin, what do you, I, I think the main problem is they just cannot keep Natrona out of the out of the post. Yep, that's what we were talking about. That Natrona was a... I don't, I don't have any paint points, but uh, they're 14 to 25 overall shooting for the first half. And I'd, I'd say more than half of that came in the paint. So once again, use that chat feature. Let us know where you're watching from, who you're watching for. Or if you're just a fan of 1112 BISN and just watching because you like to hear our voices. <laughs> Tell Kevin, hey, if you guys remember Kevin Coyle from Wild Preps Time. I want somebody to say, hey, I'm watching from Maine. There you go. We've had Florida before. We've even had people overseas on occasion. Brandon Van Tassel, Riley's dad, watching. Richard Reynolds for Dre. Gary Ogle for Dre, I'm sure. Hey, say something like this will uh, boost uh, international stewart. Enrollment over at uh, at South High. There you go. So they're going to say the foul's on the floor. So number fifty-five, Alicia Lane, picking up her first foul. She's got fourteen points. The Bigs have fourteen and eleven points for Natrona. It's a nice drive baseline by Van Tassel. They're not going to see too much second half time. They'll go put in a few buckets and go sit yeah. on the bench. So Van Tassel gets the ball and she loses it. It's going to be turnover South. Of course, Natrona has a quick turnaround because they got a. Uh, they're going to go Thursday, Thursday, Saturday next week because uh, they got main reasons because the 4A West Regional Wrestling Tournament is here mm -hmm. Friday and Saturday. So they are forced to alter their schedule. Thunder Basin comes in Thursday. There's going to be a foul. It's going to be on the floor. Hand check. Number 21. Number 12, sorry. I was reading it from my direction rather than the other direction. So Jerry Brown picks up her second foul. There's a number 15. Hit tricks. Man, 35 to yeah. 16. Yeah, it's just that up close scoring in the paint. I like I'm, how they're trying to draw the bigs out, though, by keeping the fours and the fives for the Lady Bison out deep. Opens up lanes like that for Jaya Brown to go in for the basket. She gets her first points of the game. Once again, this is our view from the game. Ooh, that should be an offensive foul. They're not going to call anything, huh? That's a good no call, actually. That's a good no call. 37 to 18. So Brown at the top of the key overlooks the defense. Goes far side, right side to Harlan. Harlan dribbles baseline, looking to get the ball to Martinez, who's battling for position. She's going to be fouled. It's going to be on Natrona. And that's going to be Kuganauer picking up her third. How many players for Natrona have two, at least two or three fouls? Uh, we got two with three and one with two. And they just did a substitution of three players. Yeah. So South will inbound underneath their own basket. They get it into Van Tassel, who gets double teamed right off the bat. She throws up a runner up and in. Good shot. Two people in her face. Oh, and there's going to be a timeout. Timeout, Pena Business Services timeout. I'm going to take one with them, show some sponsorship, some love on the Bison. 1112 BISN, your Bison Network. Majestic Butterfly Beauty Salon treats your hair like their canvas. Locally owned and family friendly, Majestic Butterfly offers women, men's, and children haircuts, as well as color services and perms. Your hair is their masterpiece. So if you are looking for a new style, great hair doesn't happen by chance, it happens by appointment. Our stylist can schedule an appointment by calling any of the numbers below, or you can call Majestic Butterfly directly at 307-369-2201. Majestic Butterfly. Beautiful hair with beautiful care.
And we're back from the Pena Business Services timeout. Natrona will inbound from their backcourt. They get ball in, facing full court pressure. And that's going to be number 25, is it? 23, Paddock. Now that's number 21. They get it off to Lane. Lane goes far side. Right back to Lane. And she misses, and Demas gets the rebound. And she attacks, throws up a shot. She's going to miss. Rebound Van Tassel. Turn around jumper, count the basket. She's going to get fouled and go to the free throw line for the old-fashioned three-point play. It looks like South off offensively is uh, do do kind of stepping up their aggression on, on both sides of the ball a little bit more. I'll tell you what, man, there's someone on here that said if Dima scores 12 points, she's going to get fried rice. Should we tell her that? That's a lot of pressure to put on somebody, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> So Lane with the ball outside the three-point line, which is probably where you want her. Then there's a skip pass. South doing a better job on Robertson and Lane to start the second half. There's a miss, but and the rebound. Demas once again with the ball. Kicks it off to Brown. Brown behind the back, up off the backboard, no miss. Ah, and there's one rebound we don't get. I like it though, you know, South, South uh, when they're when, when they're getting those turnovers, they're realizing it quickly and they're, and I'd say they're eager to score, but I don't want to say maybe they're getting a little too eager. You know, they, they had numbers on that last turnover there and they just don't, they didn't take advantage of it. And there's Lane. The one time they, they break down on her defense and she gets down to the paint. Scores a basket for her 16th point. 39 to 22, there's another turnover for South and there's gonna be an uncontested fast break. Bucket for number 23, Emma Paddock. She's finally on the board. 41 to 22. Demas loses the ball out of bounds. She got the ball deep in the paint. <coughs> Ruby Salazar checking in. Kenna Harlan checking in. Caitlin Campbell. Gibson with the ball. Still in the backcourt, gets it over. Being guarded by Harlan. She's looking over the defense, gives it off to number 13, Salazar. Picks up her dribble. There's an attacking move, and they kick back out to number 10. Or is that number, number zero? Sorry. Zero. Campbell, rebound by Tovar, knocked out of bounds by number 21, Blom. Stay tuned for the doubleheader. Boys action, about 10 minutes at the end of this game. They changed scoring on somebody. I have Lane for 18 points, but they, they had the score over for 16. Of course, she's off the bench. Doesn't matter right now. I know, right? <laughs> Turnover south. Long cross court pass. It's going to be caught. Attempt number twenty three puts it up and in. Paddock. Fourth point. They're going to say on the floor. So Martinez took a drive to the basket. Was fouled before the shot. So it's going to be south ball under the basket. Angie Liggett checking back in. She's going to check in for Martinez as number two, Kuganauer, and number 55, Alicia Lane, checking back in. Van Tassel to Tovar now. Tovar back to Harlan. Harlan had two big three-pointers in the first half. Van Tassel with the power move, misses the shot. Rebounded by Dima. She misses, rebounded by Lane. You know, the good news is at least they're getting some offensive rebounds. And they're still getting some decent looks, too. <laughs> There's a bench warning. Coach came out on the floor a little too far. Yep. Alicia Lane, boy, she's... No. She, I can't believe she missed that shot. It's going to be south possession off of number 13, Salazar's hands. 
That's one of the few shots she actually missed down in the paint. <laughs> well, actually, that was good uh, defensive pre presence on, on, the, on the roll of South. So she had a, she, I, I, I don't think she was quite taking the approach that she's used to. So Demas goes far side off to Tovar. Tovar picks up her dribble down low to Van Tassel. Van Tassel trying to get position. Instead kicks it off to Tovar who's going to be fouled. She's going to go to the free throw line for two. Her first free throws of the game. She's got no points. She's 0 for 3 from the field. Her first free throw is up. Just off to the right. Martinez is going to check in for Demas. So on the floor for the Bison, Martinez, Harlan, Liggett, Tovar and Van Tassel. Jonah's just kind of alternating with their two big scoring threats, you know. <coughs> Lane's in, then Robertson's out, and vice versa, I think. Yep. They had him in at the start of the half at the same time, and then now they're just going to stagger him probably, keep him fresh. 43-23 to 23 is your score. Oh, yeah, just can't let that happen. Paddock with the basket, got down low. South's interior defense. I mean, just because it's not Lane or Robertson, that doesn't mean you should leave that lane open. And yeah. So South's learning the hard way. Van Tassel gets the ball, nice move to the basket, misses, rebounded by Harlan, kicks it out to number 23. Paddock, unfortunately, she plays for Natrona. Turnover South. There's Lane, that should be a travel. They didn't yeah. call it, she didn't even dribble. They got it. Travel. Yeah, I, I agree with that one. <laughs> 47 to 23 now. 130 left in the third quarter. Martinez puts up a shot. Once again, South one shot possessions. You're going to struggle in games if you're only going to get one shot possessions. I think that's where Natrona's made their living in this game so far, though. There's a travel. Second, third shot, sometimes fourth shot opportunities. They just got comfortable with some of the Trona's names and now they subbed them out again. Yeah, yeah, it's like South at times, they're, they're trying to run, they're trying to run down, try to find that small open lane and yeah. get, a, get a shot up and then they're just not getting a second opportunity. They're, they're, they're trying to score too quickly on some plays. So Martinez the, bringing the ball in the front court. She's gonna go left side, finds a lane to the basket, that puts it up and good, in. That was a good look, good, good. She knew, she knew where the defense was and, and, and was able to make that adjust, get down, the, get down the baseline, just good movement. She had that slight hesitation and it opened up for her and she just drove her right in. So the bigs Whoops. are in for Natrona and she, Lane throws it right out of bounds. Turnover south, turnover four south. <laughs> Deem is checking in for Martinez. Brown in as well. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, scorebook they gave. Okay, there's a sort of credit on the basket to the wrong person on the up here. So now, now we got it all straightened out. So Liggett's with the ball. She gives it off to Harlan. Reverses it. 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Liggett thought about the three. Instead gives it off to Tovar. She won't, she won't be afraid to shoot those. That was a good look. 20 seconds. Timeout. 30 second timeout. We're gonna keep it right here on this Pena Business Services timeout. South trailing 47 to 25. And you know, they, they came out really really strong to start the second half and now it's kind of plateaued plateaued exactly they seem to do better obviously when both robertson and lane are not on the floor together but this last minute they've been on the floor and south's been struggling to get the ball into the paint other than that great move by martinez mm -hmm. south's yeah. just got to find creative ways to get the ball and 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 closer for those higher percentage shots. Yeah, I think the insurance coach just wanted the, the Phillies to step up their defense just a little bit more. So speaking of Matrona's Robertson, she's going to be inbounding for the, for the Phillies.
thrown in their home whites. Almost stolen away by Demas. There was a ball down low to Robertson, wide open. I wouldn't say wide open, but she did get the basket right at the buzzer. First and that's going to be it for the third. Your South Lady Bison trailing 49 to 25. We're going to take a Pena Business Services timeout. Come back for fourth quarter action on the Bison. 11 12, BISN, your Bison Network. Hit a deer. Parking lot dings, hail damage, or just roadway demolition derby? No matter how your vehicle gets damaged, Missile Drive Auto Body will make sure it gets repaired back to pre-loss condition and as quickly as possible. No shortcuts, no compromises. And remember, where you get your car repaired is not your insurance company's decision, it's yours. Call today for an estimate appointment at 307-635-0639. Missile Drive Auto Body. Quality without compromise.
Second free throw is up and in. She's three for four. Another basket for the lady for the Phillies. I gotta keep, I gotta remember. I don't That's have to Lane. say lady. That's Lane. That's Lane. Twenty points now. Twenty for points for Lane. Yeah. I think she's probably done for the evening. Afternoon, I should say. Yep. I mean, she came into the game averaging twelve point seven points a game. She's got twenty. She's gonna pick up the fourth foul though of the game. Yeah, I think I'd sub her out now. I hate to say game's in the bag, unfortunately. So Riley's going to go to the free throw line for two. She's two for four from the charity stripe. She hits it. Yeah, yeah Lane's done. Lane's going to exit with 20 points and four fouls. Van Tassel. Just misses the second one. It's going to be rebounded by number 21, Blom. Once again, I want to give a shout-out to my partner, Steve, who had to travel this week, and that's why I didn't ask him to come to Casper with me because he's been traveling all week with his real job. Missed shot attempt. Van Tassel gets the rebound. Long cross-court pass. Not south strength. Turns the ball over. There's a three. It's oh, got it. Yeah, number two, Kugenauer gets the three. That's her first points in the game. 61 to 30, 404 left in the ball game. Van Tassel misses the shot. Going for a rebound, but Martinez gets it instead. She tries for a misses. Rebounds, goes back to Martinez. Rebound goes back to Martinez again, and she's going to get fouled. If you don't get it the first or second time, get it the third time, and she's going to get the foul and the basket. She's got 10 points, chance to make it 11, as number 21, Tamron Blom, picks up the foul. <coughs> Robertson checked back in. She's got 17 points. Just off to the left, and it's going to be rebounded by Matrona, 61 to 32 is your score. They get the ball down low to, to Robertson. I thought she was going to do a nice little turnaround there. They're going to call a foul, a push. It's going to be Martinez, which would be her third. Only the fourth team foul on the Lady Bison. So for those of you just tuning in, yeah, we are in a Right behind the Natrona basket upstairs. Offensive foul, turnover south, turnover for South. I didn't see the note. It's going to be number 13, Salazar, who picks up her first foul. So inbounding is Harlan to Brown. Brown gets the ball into the front court. She's going to be met by Campbell. She goes far side. Actually, not Campbell, that's Hildebrand. Harlan now back to Martinez in between the circles. Martinez overlooking the defense. Drives. Gets to the paint. Kicks it off to Brown. Brown back to Harlan. Harlan from the free throw line. Misses the shot. Rebound Robertson. Three minutes left. Trona playing patient, trying to feed it to Robertson. Missed pass there. Goes to Martinez. A little bit of contact, but it was incidental. Van Tassel sees a lane. Throws up a shot. Up and in. Van Tassel with nine points. Yep. It's going to be a timeout. Yeah, just get the... Just quick, just quickie, just to get the JVs in. Well, they're going to call it a full, so we're going to take one with them here on the Bison. 11-12, BISN, your Bison Network. 
Physical Therapy and Balance Centers in Cheyenne is unlike any therapy center you've been to before. Our highly skilled, compassionate team of therapy providers are 100% focused on achieving optimal health and wellness for you. If you are tired of living in pain, want to just feel better and move better, or want to improve your strength, endurance, and physical conditioning, then it's time to get physical. Experience the physical difference today by calling 307-772-0955 or visit their website at physicalcenters.com. Physical Therapy and Balance Centers. Let's get moving again. Back for fourth quarter action here in Natrona County High School. Your South Lady Bison trailing 61 to 34 to the Phillies. Natrona will have the ball. Two thirty-three left. You know, South. Unfortunately, you just look at the number. South. South just did not have an answer for Robertson and Lane. Yeah, that's a pretty good combination right there for exactly. the Phillies. Exactly. Not since. Uh, not since they're trying to head Kaylee Johnson before she went to Stanford. Yep. Well, I remember that. She was a she was a good basketball player. <laughs> really well, right now that was in the days of the old Orange Dungeon. Yep. It's going to be a foul on the play, or is it just going to be knocked out of bounds? Foul. Nope. Foul. Parts of this gym, parts of the area, it's hard for us to see. I think it's going to be on Demas. It is. Andrea picks up her second. It's going to be on the floor, though. I'll try to angle the camera for you guys. They get the ball in. There's going to be another foul. This one's going to be a shooting foul. That's going to be on Liggett, her second. Number 13, Ruby Salazar, 50% on the season from the free throw line. I think she's one for two coming into this game or coming into this week. Yeah, because this, uh, this is her first time at the line. Yep. So she hits it. I want to thank all of you for tuning in. Make sure you tune in for the boys game. But before you do that, hit the subscribe button. It's the red button right there on the bottom right-hand side of the player. Totally free. Just shows your support towards local live streamers like 1112 BISN. We're able to bring these cut games to you at no cost to the viewer. Demas to Harlan. Down low to a wide open Van Tassel. She puts it up and in. Van Tassel with the basket, 62 to 36. She's got 11 points. Turnover. Demas with the ball. Centers it up. Gives it off to Liggett. Long two point shot by Demas, and she misses. It's going to be rebound Natrona. Trona with the ball. She's going to be fouled by Liggett. It's going to be a one and one. No, they're going to see it. They're going to say Demas. It should be a one and one. I have seven, but oh well. <laughs> At this point, who cares? Yep. Right? 116 left. Tipped out of bounds by Liggett who was guarding Haley Gibson. I'll try to get you guys a good angle here. How's that? All the viewers down there, how's this angle? It's like the NFL game cam right here. We just need to... Demas with the steal. She's going to go in for the basket and the foul. It's going to be her sixth point. Hopefully make it seven. 62 to 38 now, the Lady Bison. Trailing. Coming in 5 and 12 on the season after they defeated the Sheridan Lady Bronx for the first time in program history. Petrona beat the Lady Plainsman last night to go 10 and 5 on the season. Drea misses the free throw and it's going to be rebounded by Petrona with a minute left in this ballgame. I did not see what happened. Looks like it foul on the play. Yeah, Caitlin Campbell. Uh, be going to line here. She's she, she just in a 1 1 encounter and just tried to put an underhand shot. Raina Tovar picks up her first foul. Caitlin Campbell misses the first free throw. She's 43% from the free throw line.
Hits the second free throw. Turnover South. Number one is in the ball game for the Lady Bison. She is an underclassman. Usually plays JV. I'm going to have to effort that name. I've got all this paper in front of me. <laughs> Here it is. Laney Ramirez. 50 seconds left. That's probably the hardest name you've ever had to pronounce. I know, right? <laughs> no, that's what is. What is? Yeah. Man, you know, I've had a couple over the years. I, I just can't remember them. I remember the hardest name I ever had, and I had it burrowed in my head. My first few years here in Wyoming for the UW men's basketball team, there was a seven-foot guy, U Uche and San Wamadi. Oh, Uche. I, I, mean, I remember him. Yes. I think the Steve. coolest name I've ever had to broadcast, and I think Steve will agree with me on this one, Sheridan Bronk wide receiver, Coy Steele. <laughs> that name right there, I mean. You, oh, you, yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> that was the coolest name. But the hardest name, Steve, if you remember, because I know you're watching right now, who do you think is the hardest name you've had to announce during a broadcast? Tell you what, yeah, back, back in those days, yeah, for you, for you, Dub, Uche, he was just a rejection machine. Yeah, yep. Laney gets the free throw for her first points. 65 to 39. Three players are thrown in double figures. And yeah, so yeah, Pat, Paddock had a good day. 11 points all in the second half. Yeah, I, I like the one. I like to think, wonder what their rebounds are. I bet you one of them was close to a double-double, at least Lane. 65 to 40, 10 seconds left. Matrona with the ball. Looks like they're going to hold it out top. That's going to be Emma Paddock with the ball. Back to number 10, Gibson, as they're about to go 11 and 5 on the season. And that's going to be it for the end of this game. On the Majestic Butterfly scoreboard, the South Lady Bison fall to the Phillies from Natrona County, 65 to 40. Make sure you tune in for the second half of our doubleheader with me and Kevin Coyle live from the Toronto County High School on the Bison 1112 BISN, your Bison Network.